question. Uh, but I want to talk about the New Orleans Saints right here. As uh, yesterday, they made it to get it done again against the Niners. They cover the nine and a half points, sign of a good football team. Uh, but Drew Brees is the story as he does not come back out in that second half. He comes back out, but he does not play uh, due to some due to an injury, uh, the nature of which is still a bit vague. It seems a bit cumulative, and we'll get into that. But my first thought is this. The 49ers are a plague ship. This is how the plague spread back in the day, right? I mean, they are bad luck personified right now in the NFL. And if you let them behind your gates, if you let them into your city, you too will be infected. I mean, Breeze, Lattimore, Armstead, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, others It felt like a lot of people left the game at one point or another. And we're not really sure, especially with Breeze kind of sucking up all the air in the room. Like, well, what is the status of Chauncey Gardner-Johnson? As we'll talk about, it, he was fantastic yesterday. And so we'll try to get answers to all of this as the game goes on. But it was definitely frustrating as a Saints fan watching this and kind of realizing that, uh, you know, the Saints were clearly the better team. And this is just an exercise in, you know, finishing this game out. And you kept having guys get hit with a bit of bad luck. But let's talk about Drew Brees because he is obviously the main person here. Um, I will say this. So uh, let's let, let, let's start this with Breeze on himself. On uh, so this is going to be Breeze two when he knew he wasn't going to return, uh, because I think that's a great launching point for kind of discussing the the kind of nebulous nature of this injury. Here's Drew Breeze and why he didn't return that second half or when he knew. He I always worry about halftime because you sit for so long, you know. And so um, when I came out in the second half and, and started throwing the ball, um, it became really apparent that um, I wasn't going to be effective. Yeah, so that was uh, – and, 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 and really, I mean, he, he makes it sound kind of run-of-the-mill there, but I think it's important to highlight just how unprecedented this is it, it, and breeds his time in a New Orleans Saints uniform. I mean, as Sean Payton said, uh, this is the first time that he can remember in 15 years that Drew Brees would have pulled himself out because his body just couldn't function. And, and it's not a toughness issue, right? I mean, Breeze is tough as nails. We know all that. We know the injuries that he's played through in the past, whether it was a torn MCL, bruised rotator cuff, getting back from that thumb in five games last year. Like, Breeze has played hurt consistently throughout his entire career. All quarterbacks do. Um, and, and so we know it's not a tough. I mean, look, even look at the two-minute drill yesterday, right? We always make jokes about Breeze being such a beast during two-minute, and here he gets hurt right before two-minute, and it didn't matter. He went out there hurting horribly, still found a way to get the huge touchdown right before half that essentially kind of broke the Niners' spear and put this game out of reach. And, and if you want to go back and you watch that drive right before half, watch that screen to Alvin Kamara because that is a throw that I think at first glance appears easy, but the more you really dive into it, you realize what an art it was, and then you understand with how he was feeling physically at the time, you understand what an accomplishment it was. Like, appreciate the touch that he displayed there. Appreciate the courage. Think about the very nature of a screen pass where you have to stare down free rushers and deliver that ball. So your body already feels like it's one hit away from completely shattering pain to the point where you don't know if you can function in the second half. You end up deciding that you cannot. And yet you stare down those free rushers, perfect touch pass over the top, Managed to then coordinate an entire drive that ends with an Alva Kamara touchdown pass, like I said, that basically broke the 49ers. And so you know he can tolerate pain. It's just that in the end, it wasn't a pain tolerance thing. He's mentally strong enough, but unfortunately his body just betrayed him. Some of this, I'm sure, is uh, age-related. I mean, being 41 old and taking that many cumulative hits, cumulative was a word that seemed to come up a lot yesterday. Remember, he's been dealing with right shoulder issues that's had him on the injury list now add the ribs into the back and I should say the ribs are kind of the uh the answer that most people are looking at when what's wrong with Drew Brees and he'll have an MRI and everything else today to try to kind of narrow that down but yeah his body just betrays him in the end and we'll see where it goes um you know I, I think best case scenario maybe he misses a couple games you manage to bridge the gap Maybe you end up losing out on the one seat conversation. That's not the worst thing in the world. Maybe a couple weeks off for Breeze would do his body some good. I mean, he has joked about how last season, missing those five games with that thumb injury, thankfully the team went 5-0. and But in missing those games, 
uh, his body actually got a pretty big respite. It's part of the reason why I think he was NFC Offensive Player of the Month in December is because he was fresher than he was normally at that point of the year. So there are some potential silver linings here, um, but we'll have to wait until they play out. But I think last year is important to highlight, right, obviously, because of how the Saints managed to mitigate that situation, how they managed to find, not even mitigate, really, how they managed to thrive in the absence of Breeze. And while it is absolutely Teddy Bridgewater, it was absolutely the defense stepping up. I mean, you think about that Seattle game last year, Deontay Harris and the special team stepping up. Everybody had a hand in it. It is the man at the top that may, should make you feel most confident about making it through a potential uh, breezeless stretch. Like, regardless of what wrong what, what is wrong with Drew, you must be thankful for Sean Payton because, in my mind, he is the only chance that you have to remain uh, relevant. Right, I mean, when, when and and if you follow Jeff Duncan's writings uh, on the Athletic, he's fantastic. I, again, I'd recommend picking up Peyton Breeze, making him the NFL's greatest offense. Um, it's it, it's really good, and it shows you just all of the elements that Sean Payton is taking into consideration that we never even consider. I mean, I love Jeff's game write ups, right? And in the Chicago Bears write up a couple weeks ago, he pointed out the play calling differences when the Saints were with the wind versus against the win, right? A more conservative approach when you're going into the win that paid dividends and then letting it fly a little more with the wind at your back. And and that's even a very surface level one that we can kind of appreciate if we if, even if we don't think about it off the top. Sean Payton, how he analyzes this game, what determines his play call, it goes much deeper than that. Look at how he shaped this offense in the image of Alvin Kamara after Mike Thomas has gone down. Look at what he did with Teddy Bridgewater last season and and then, and then where that becomes kind of interesting is before you get into the disadvantages or the potential step downs from Jameis Winston or what the potential pitfalls are there are some advantages as well right like Sean Payton as we said he will shape the offense in the image of what the players are able to do it's it, it, it's how they've had someone success with Mike Thomas maybe the best offensive player in the NFL a top five offensive player in the NFL He's been out, and the Saints offense still managed to produce. Why? Because Sean Payton is able to customize. Well, what can he do with Jameis Winston? Because all of a sudden, you do have a different skill set there, right? Looks like the deep ball's back on the menu, boys. If you want to stretch defenses, if you want to threaten them vertically, you can do that once again with Winston. Now, the obvious drawbacks are, as you saw yesterday even, Jameis Winston is... Uh, more prone to making some poor decisions, some poor throws. He got lucky to get away with a couple yesterday. Um, he held on to the ball too long yesterday, eating a couple of sacks that really felt like fumble threats, and especially how he was trying to stay alive. Um, so, look, definite improvement needs to take place. But but, but I would also caution, I, I see a lot of people immediately um, – kind of bailing on the Winston bandwagon after yesterday's performance. I would caution against that, and, and, and let's just look at last year, right? The, the five-game stretch of that breeze last year is the best kind of uh, case study that we have to use to inform us about what we think will happen next. Well, do you all remember when Teddy Bridgewater came that Rams game? He left a lot to be desired. 17-30, 165 yards, no touchdowns, ultra-conservative, um, just didn't look very effective moving the ball at all. Well, that was game one. What did Teddy Bridgewater do? Start one when he knew that he had a full week as the guy. Sean Payton knew that he had to customize the game plan to match his skill set. He beats a very good Seattle Seahawks team and goes 19-27 to for 177, two touchdowns, no interceptions. So it's not that there's a huge gaudy difference there. I mean, the completion percentage is better. The yards are slightly better. And the, the key piece, though, is the two touchdowns, there's nothing in game number one. But there was clear and marked improvement. And in the way that the Saints defense is playing right now and in the way that these special teams are playing right now, I, the offense doesn't have to be world beaters. They have to be good enough. And I think you can be good enough with Jameis Winston at quarterback, and I think you can be good enough. And by good enough, I mean to bridge this gap, not have the season fall apart. This could remove you from the one seed, right, unless they just exceed all expectations like they did last season in a similar spot when they go 5-0 and with Jout Drew Brees. But you can be good enough to keep everything intact for the most part, still maybe be in the fight for the one seed. Uh, you're, you're still in a great spot for the NFC South, even when though Tampa Bay is breathing down your neck a bit. Uh, 
But I, th- I think Sean Payton makes you good enough. I, th- I think you can potentially get this done now that you know, or maybe I should say we'll wait on the news today, but I expect that you will know that Jameis Winston will be your starter going into this Atlanta game and he'll have a full week of practice with that knowledge. And Sean Payton will have a full week of preparation getting him ready for it. Uh, so all is not lost. I guess the, well, what everything hinges on now, though, is how long-term is this for Drew Brees? And I guess what's scarier, a specific injury or something more nebulous? And, and really, I think it's the latter. That's what worries me. A specific injury provides a clear path to return, a clear timetable. If it's just an accumulation thing, how your body feels, who knows how long that could be. We'll have to wait and see throughout the day today. Now, I get long-winded. We didn't even get into the defense. We will get into that later in the show. Uh, Coming up next, though, LSU, no game on Saturday. Still looks like they're set to play Arkansas. A lot of rumors swirling about potential schedule changes. Uh, Let's talk to Verge Osbury from the LSU Athletic Department next here on Off the Bench, 104.5, 100.3 at 94.7 ESPN. Off the bench with Kalana and T-Bob.